Now back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. Welcome back to the program with uh, Joe Murphy and Derek Ma from Murphy Batista LLP, Vancouver personal injury law firm downtown at 650 West Georgia and online at murphybatista.com. Batista, by the way, friends, is B-A-T-T-I-S-T-A. The Murphy part, I'm sure you can figure out for yourself. It's (laughs) murphybatista.com. We're going to talk about treatment and rehabilitation uh, flowing out of uh, accidents and we talked about ICBC and and Part Seven benefits and that's the no fault part of insurance in British Columbia. It's not about who caused the accident. It's about the fact that benefits flow regardless of who caused the accident to all parties who need to receive those benefits. Except, Correct. of course, Derek, they don't always flow as smoothly as some injured parties would like to see. When do things go off the rails? How do people not get well served? Well, it's an interesting question because I think I've seen two sides of that. Um, sometimes it's very early on in the process when our clients come in and say, I've been wanting to get my massage therapy or my physiotherapy. The adjusters told me this. I'm really at my wit's end now. What can I do? And that leads to us representing them and helping through them, um, helping them through that process. Okay. The other side of it is actually sometimes adjusters have been very good with the clients, and they've paid for probably more than what they should have, but the clients have reached the point where they know that they do need a lawyer to get involved now. So it can depend in many ways on the adjuster that's been assigned to the claim, and they do have some authority in what they want to pay or will not pay. Let me just explore that, if I can, with you, Derek, for one one more half step, because uh, the assumption in that response was that I knew enough uh, that, that my injury was significant enough that I was able to say to ICBC, things just aren't right here. Uh, I'm not well, uh, and I, I've probably been to the doctor a few times, and he backs me up, and so on. So uh, then there's a pattern of rehabilitation that is required who determines that and uh, obviously the insurance company is going to pay for it but who who makes the call on well you better go see a physio it's generally the family doctor that is the quarterback of all that okay so, you know someone's hurt in a, in a car accident and they go and see their family doctor and they say my neck hurts my back hurts and the doctor says okay you need to start physiotherapy they give them a, a referral for that and at that point they take it to the physio clinic and the clinic usually knows how to deal with ICBC to get funding for that. But at some point, maybe it might be right early in the beginning or after 10 treatments, they get some resistance. And that's usually when we get involved and clients come to see us because their treatments are not being paid for anymore by ICBC. And usually what the ICBC gesture will say is, I don't think you need this therapy anymore. Um, and they've overstepped, I think, their bounds in saying that because they don't have the medical. I was just going to say this. Is, this would that. be where the uh, the uh, adjuster shows you his or her MD when they make this <laughs> this decision. Joe, what happens though when you're more profoundly injured and you're not able to articulate your case, and yet clearly rehabilitation is going to be part of your recovery? Where does where, where does the call get made on what rehabilitation processes begin and where? Yeah, the, the dilemma sometimes, Sterling, for people is if they're badly hurt, but if they don't have a family doctor, and that's common now. Very, unfortunately. Or have a family doctor who doesn't want to get too involved, especially if they know there's a potential lawsuit, they're sort of left floating there and never never land because you really need someone who's going to step in and organize the rehab program so what icbc sometimes does and what we always do with our clients who are badly injured is we hire an occupational therapist and occupational therapists aren't people who deal with work issues because that's what the name sounds like Mm, it sure does yeah they should be called functional therapists because they deal with how, how people function and the OT is the ideal person to get involved and become the quarterback in organizing the other therapies and monitoring them. And we will commonly uh, get a rehab doctor. They're called a physiatrist, which sounds like and is spelled like psychiatrist, but mm-hmm. it's a rehab doctor. Right. They're a specialist. Um, we sometimes will get them involved to work with the OT so that they can organize and monitor and manage a rehab program because I know from experience the better the rehab people get, and the earlier they get it, right. the better the outcome. So there's there's some cases, I know uh, PTSD is a good example. If a person doesn't get the proper therapy for PTSD early enough, 
the problems become entrenched. They become permanent. And the, and the, the picture looks like someone with a brain injury. Mm -hmm. Um, and it really doesn't matter after, say, two years because it's probably too late to change it. So the key is getting the therapy in early. Uh, grief counseling uh, is, is effective if it's early on. And this is oftentimes people who've had a family member die in an accident, sure, yeah. especially if they're there at the scene. Those, those are horrific. Yeah. And, the, and there's PTSD, but the key to the counseling effectiveness is getting the right counselor and getting them involved early on. And that sometimes can be done by a family doctor, but more often than not, it takes an, a good OT, an occupational therapist, mm -hmm. and maybe a good physiatrist, rehab doctor, sometimes a good psychiatrist at getting these people the help they need and as early as they can because that's when it works best. We met a physiatrist from the False Creek uh, Health Center uh, recently, a very, very interesting fellow. Derek, when is it uh, appropriate or when is it smart, perhaps, to call a lawyer? When you've been in a car accident and there are injuries, not just to the car, but to the people involved, maybe on both sides of the equation in the accident, and you're just, it's just, it's up in the air and it's not right. When do you, I mean, do you obviously you start with ICBC, you make a phone call, if it's on the weekend, you call their claim center, but it's not right and you know and you can feel it from the first moment. When should you get in touch with a lawyer? Well, I think that's a good question because for many people who've been in an accident, it is usually their first time. They don't know what to do with the sure, process of course we or the don't. system. No. So what I've always told people is contact a lawyer, come see us, we'll meet with you and tell you where your claim is at. And if it's not necessary to have a lawyer involved at that point, we'll tell you that. Right. And, you know, come back and see us in six months if you're not feeling better because there can be points where it's not necessary to have a lawyer involved in your claims, particularly if the injuries are not too bad, ICBC is being cooperative, you think it would be better within six months, you're probably better off just to deal with it on your own at that point. Right. But if something that sort of gut feeling r resonates with you that it's not right, mm -hmm. certainly come in, talk to a lawyer, we'll explain to you what your options are, what we do as your lawyers to help you get through that process. Because I think what Joe said is really important, which is the timing of rehab. Right. And you need it as early as possible, and I speak from that uh, not only from the legal side of it, well, but from, five years as a physiotherapist, yeah, right? And, and it absolutely is. And if you talk to doctors or therapists, they say two years after an accident, if you're not better within two years, that's the way you're going to be for the foreseeable future. Some people will say three years, but you know, most of the time they say it's around that two to three year mark. And if you have not had that proper therapy at that point, you're probably going to be the way you are. And what Joe was referring to in some of those emotional injuries that can mimic brain injuries, right. it, it doesn't change very much. But also the physical side of it is once you've been down this pain pathway and you have this chronic pain and every day you wake up and you feel like that, mm. your body actually starts to adjust to that. And there are changes within your body for that. So I always tell people it's very important to get your treatment as early as possible and have someone who can actually help facilitate that like an OT. Right. Now, further to that, now, Joe, I may be using uh, an American term, but in Canada, or in British Columbia specifically, do we have a statute of limitations beyond which you can't claim uh, just because you've, you've passed the magic we, line and you're you're done? Yeah, we, we do, Sterling, and the rule in BC is if you're injured in an accident, you have to start the lawsuit within two years of that accident. If you're a child and injured, the two years doesn't begin to run until you're 19, so you have until the age of 21. But there are some exceptions to that. But generally, the rule is two years uh, to start the lawsuit. And, and people can't wait till they're three days short of the two years and go and see a lawyer. Right. They really need to do that a few weeks before that because the last thing you want is a person who's got a valid claim. And, and I've we recently had a client who came in who was dealing with the adjuster. The adjuster says, I want to deal with you on this. And she did. And then she finally um, said to the adjuster, okay, I'm feeling better now. I'm ready to settle. And they said, well, I'm sorry. It's 25 months. It's too late. You've, you've lost that. Although ICBC, I understand, has a policy where if they're dealing with the person who's representing themselves, they'll alert them to the two-year rule. Okay. In this case, that didn't happen. And she came to see us and said, you know, I tried dealing with them directly, and look what happened to me. And in the end, in that case, ICBC agreed to pay her claim, even though technically we were beyond the two years. But so, such a, a marginal technical line crossing in terms of matter of days there, right? Well, the argument that we used in that case, Sterling, is if you want these people to deal with you directly, 
if you want them not to consult a lawyer, mm -hmm. you can't then take advantage of their ignorance. Right, right. And if you go into an ICBC claim center, they usually have a big poster on the wall that says, give us a chance. You mm -hmm. don't need to hire a lawyer. Give us a chance. Well, if they do that, as they say, they can't take advantage of that person's good nature and, and, and ignorance of the law. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek, you mentioned uh, that it's, it's probably, and you're, you're so right, when we get involved in an accident, you know, we, it's not something that happens to us on a very regular basis. Uh, and so we're immediately into an alien world of terminology and jargon that's just, uh, it might as well be a different country. So uh, why not talk to a lawyer? It doesn't cost anything to sit down with one of you or one of your colleagues at Murphy Batista for a quick chat about what just happened to me and w where do I go from here? That doesn't cost anything. That's correct, and I think there, there's no fee that we charge for initial consultation right. or anything like that. I, I think where the reluctance comes in is that people think, I don't want to be one of those people that do that. There's a little bit of a stigma to think I went and hired a lawyer um, to pursue my personal injury claim because you know, I don't have to tell my friends about this or people are going to think I'm exaggerating this. Is ICBC going to put surveillance on me, right. et cetera, et cetera. Um, the reality is, you know, all our clients... Uh, for the most part, they are people that never asked for this accident to happen. They went about their business. It happened in that day. Right. And it's something that they don't want to deal with. If they could go back the day before the accident, they absolutely would go there. Mm -hmm. And especially for, you know, many of these people who are high-functioning people before an accident, they don't deal well with accidents at all. Um, they're probably the worst people that can deal with an accident because they like control. Mm-hmm. Mm. And all of a sudden, this is out of their hands. Completely. And they can't do that anymore. That's right. And in many ways, you know, now they're at their mercy of their, their family doctor. I have to follow what my family doctor says. I have to follow what my therapist tells me to do. And then I have to listen to what ICBC has to tell me to do. So that's a really challenging process for them. And, and many times, people, they just need to find that time when they're ready to consult a lawyer. And it's not a good and hard, fast rule about that. But they have to be, um, excuse me, comfortable with that process. And Joe, you've said in the past many times that you know, if and, and Derek just said it a few minutes ago too. If you show up at the office and you state your case, and here's what's happened to me, there will be those people who will show up at the office that you will have a chat with and say, "Look, you really don't need a lawyer." But as long as you're, since you're here, here's what you do need to do. You need to do this, this, and this in this order. And Bob's your uncle. You're fine. Yeah, uh, Sterling, that's commonly done by me in about a 10-minute phone call. So someone phones me and says, okay, I've, I've been in an accident. So they don't even need to come in. Yeah, and in 10 minutes, I can tell them how the system works, what the limitation is, and how to deal with settling their claim. ICBC, as a rule, wants to settle claims as quickly as possible. Sure, yeah. And the advice I give to people, and this is the standard advice, is don't finish your claim until you're all better and, and this is the key, back to your normal activities. So if you're back to your normal activities and you're fine, then you can settle your claim. But don't do it before then. Um, versus an adjuster who's so keen to get it settled early, it the adjuster the books, wants right? to close their files, sure. and they want to avoid having to pay a lot more money if the, if the uh, outcome is poor. Okay. So, but I, a 10-minute phone call. I usually can take care of that. Well, if that's the case, let me give you the phone number here, friends. It's 604-683-9621. Or if you're listening on Vancouver Island or from anywhere else out of the immediate dialing area, they got a toll-free line. they got you covered, too, at one 683 9621 Same number. Uh, locally, it's with 604. Uh, from long distance, it's one 683 9621 Murphy Batista, 650 West Georgia downtown, and online at murphybatista.com. I gave the phone numbers kind of fast. It's on the website, and you can, uh, all the email contacts of my guests and uh, their colleagues as well. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to go to talk about quarterbacks. Should it be an occupational therapist, or should it be the family doctor, who is not a lawyer? I hasten to quickly add. We'll uh, get this uh, in detail after this quick time out. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL 650.